I enjoyed that summoner though, mate. Mm. Really good. Like it's uh, those triangle and those different triangles is what's fucking. So that's what I was always struggling with. If you get them in entanglement and they just fucking it's slippery. Yeah, no, that's you know the worst I mean? thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Slippery, they're getting out, but yeah. it's a fucking triangle. That you need to wear a long like, sleeve and spats. That helps. Is that what you do? Yeah, yeah. is it obviously? <laughs> yeah. Does it that make that much of a difference? Yeah. Especially with you, because you're like a fucking gory stop fish, mate. <laughs> yeah, <I am. laughs> Do you know what? Before I train, a little bit of moisturizer. Yeah, no doubt, mate. You're bathing it. <laughs> no, no, for real. Makes a huge difference. Is it? Massive. Are you allowed to compete in that? A long sleeve and rash guard? Yeah, like yeah, of course, yeah. ADCC, yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously, you can wear whatever you want. ADCC, you're allowed to wear shoes. You can wear yeah. shoes, singlet, you can wear whatever you want, yeah. In ADCC, you can? Yeah, you can wear whatever you want, I'm pretty sure. I know, it's a, it's a grappling. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure people come in with wrestling boots sometimes. I mean, it's retarded, because if someone gets your foot, you're definitely never slipping that. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can wear whatever you want. You can wear a gi if you want ADCC. I know trials, you can wear a gi if you want. You can wear whatever, there's no dress code. As long as you're not, like, fucking naked or something. Yeah. Pretty sure, didn't some dude doing speedos? Am I, I was like, about to say. Like, I think that was a UFC, mate. No, no, yeah. no, no. There was an ADCC or some, some was dude. It? Yeah, some fucking cracker from America. I swear <laughs> to God. I'd probably have this image in my head of some, <laughs> lun of some <laughs> lunatic in, a, in the speedo. I'm pretty sure it was something like that. I mate. swear I remember seeing that on Instagram thinking just what the fuck. Mate, you're probably like, if yeah. you could do that, someone's done it, haven't they? Yeah. You know what I mean, if you can do it, there's some fucking weirdo would be like, yeah. You wouldn't think any, I know what you're saying, but you wouldn't think anyone would do that, but I'm pretty sure someone did it. I have to, have to check mate, that. Mate, he was at the, the seminar today, the, the mental one that you were saying, he'd probably rock up in that one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Rory, potentially, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, he looks a type, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He looked like yeah, a good lad. surprised, yeah. yeah. He's, fuck it, he's a funny guy. Yeah, it was a good seminar, mate. And I think just to Danny's point there, like the just even the comment around it's not so much like the braking mechanics, it's more just the control. Yeah. That kind of gives you that higher percent of finish. I think that's really key. Do, do you know the first thing you said about um, following the people? So if they've got their right leg forward, they yeah. can't go that way, you, they got to go this yeah. way. Mate, I never, me being fucking retarded probably, but I never thought of that. No, a lot, a lot of people just don't cover that. I always yeah. overlook that, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool detail. And if you're yeah. playing guard and stuff, it's like, it's just, I'd say, yeah, when you, if you're not maybe a natural guard player and you're trying to get into it, or maybe if you're a bigger guy, I find people just end up flanking you too quick and they jump to the side and you're like, oh, you, know, when big, yeah, yeah. you know when bigger guys try and play guard? Mm -hmm. And then they just get out, like the guy's fast and they start jumping around, they're like a turtle on their back, you know, yeah. that just gives you that, you, so you know, yeah, so you they know, never yeah. surprise you, yes, yeah, so you can always anticipate. And anticipation is like one of the greatest things we can ever have in jiu-jitsu. Like when you roll with someone who's a black belt and you're a blue belt or a white belt, let's say, they just have, they just can anticipate exactly what you're going to do. It's not like they can see moves ahead. They can just, it's just a muscle memory, isn't it? Like when they step here, you know. Where they're going to step, yeah. Probably, you know what they're going to do from here and it's just, you can anticipate it. It's like a superpower almost. It makes you be able to like almost uh, see the future almost in a way, you know? Yeah. So, what... so just with little things like that, because you know them with that certain leg in front, you know which way they're going to go. So you're anticipating when they move, you know where they're going to go and then you can always read them. And they're just like, that's where they can't get around you. Yeah. Well, that's what I felt like today with you. I was just like, <laughs> put my leg down every time, just re-pummel, re-pummel, re-pummel. I was like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, no, it was wicked, man. How was the, uh, how was the trip down from Trent City, mate? I'm um, no. <laughs> I actually have to travel a long way to get to Trent City. Oh dear. Yeah. Long Where way. exactly is Trent City? Trent City is Ladbroke Grove. Okay. Yeah, which is near Hammersmith. It's far, mate, from me. That's like an hour and a half, hour forty minutes from my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've I've seen the post, but I don't really know the the, the joke, mate. So do you <laughs> it's just Charles Charles uh, Price, my strength and conditioning coach. He just. Um, I saw him start working with like Owen, obviously, little Owen, big Owen, uh, Owen of Flanagan, Owen yeah. Jones and stuff. And then I think it was, Owen, oh yeah, Owen Jones said, why don't you come like for a session or whatever? And he yeah. introduced me to Charles. Then I was on his online program and he called me in for a session and said, why don't you come down to the gym and we'll fix some of your form and stuff? Because I never really did weights. And then um, he said, and then after I come down for that, then went back home, I was still doing the online program. And he was like, ah, oh, there's a kid who wants to sp like split the, the, the cost of the sessions and stuff, Harry. And then, do you want to come do it with him? And I was like, yeah, I knew Harry anyway from before. And then, so then we started lifting and then... Well, you're part of the Trent City. Trent City, yeah. <laughs> Trent City crew, yeah. That's nice, mate. And a random question, your your Instagram handle, is that is that from the Waterboy? Like TaylorAid? <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just really old, yeah. It's, it's always H2O, yeah. H2O. Yeah, yeah. H2O. <laughs> mate, it's classic. <laughs> hey guys, just letting you know that we recently launched our new everyday black belt membership on patreon this gives you access to our exclusive community where together we decide what future guests we're going to have on the podcast and what questions we're going to ask them you also get exclusive content as well as early ad free access to all of our episodes 
So if you love what we do, don't spend 10 years getting a black belt. For the price of a coffee a month, get one now. It helps us, it supports the channel, and it helps us bring you better guests. Mate, so like leg locks. So you mentioned earlier that um, you kind of like were a gi player, now obviously more of an ilgi player, and like your gi game slipped a little bit. Like, Tell us when you started really kind of getting involved with like no gi in the leg lock, game, leg lock game a lot. So I'd always done way more gi, but I'd always done no gi once a week. And I was always good at no gi, like all the time. Like I won European no gi, uh, it was juvenile, but I won that twice as juvenile in no gi. I won no gi worlds at adult purple bell in 2017. Hello. But I was training way more gi, but then, um, like I did that tournament, I got injured, so I couldn't do gi worlds. I could only afford to go to America once a year, and I'd always go to gi worlds. And then I got injured right before gi worlds, so I didn't do that. I thought I'll just go no gi worlds because I want to go to the states and compete at least once a year, and then I ended up winning that. Mm. So I'd always been good at no gi, but I'd only ever done it like once a week, or some maybe coming up to a big tournament, I do like two weeks of just no gi or something. But I was my main focus was gi. But yeah, I always enjoyed it when we took the kit off. But it wasn't like I didn't have any like I don't know systems in place so just take the gear off and have a scrap have a sweaty scrap it was no like systems and yeah. right I need to get I, need, I didn't have a game plan I will just have a, have a fight you know I mean yeah. I have a scrap with someone that was it and I enjoyed it because it was slippery it was fun and it was different to the gear so I, yeah I enjoyed it but then I fought um, I fought Tarza won no gear Europeans Oliver Tarza yeah. and it was at uh, like, end of 2022 and it was a close match. He beat me by one advantage. And I thought, oh, man. Uh, and he, he's like a big name in jiu-jitsu, someone I respect a lot. I think he's really good. And I thought, man, if I'm, if I'm like doing all right in the matches with him and I'm not even training it, I reckon I could get to ADCT. And that would be much better for my career. It's hard to achieve the top level in the gi. I feel like, just for me personally, I felt like the top level was almost too far for me to like realistically attain that level. Mm. You know, I just felt like... I don't know, I didn't think I'd ever do it. So I, I just felt like, wow, if I go to Nogi, if I can get to ADCC, it's going to do wonders for my career, can make more money, be like a proper name. I just felt like, for me personally, I had a better chance at being a top level athlete in Nogi yeah. than Gi. Why, why do you think the, uh, the kind of top level is more attainable with Nogi versus Gi then? I don't know. Maybe it's just, I just think the Brazilians are too far ahead. Yeah. I just think they're so good. But then saying that, you know, Adam just won. And he just smashed everyone, didn't he? Tapped everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's just possible for Europeans to get there, obviously, because Espen got really close. Tommy Langaka got really close. It's possible. I just don't think for me. I just yeah. think I just think I just wasn't good enough. I'd say. Yeah. Do you think it's like the grips and like the lapel guards and that type of thing? The Brazilians are just so good. I don't know. It's kind of like the Russians <laughs> in wrestling. I just think they just uh, they are just on average just so much better than everyone. Whereas I think Nogi is like an even playing field. You got like the Americans obviously leading it. And then like Brazilians and Europeans are right there, right behind them. Do you know what I mean? It's not that much different. Yeah. Whereas I think in the Gi, the Brazilians are up here and the rest of the world is like here. You know, that's the, they're just so good. Like if you look at all the other world's finals, they're all Brazilians, I think, right? This in Gi was yeah, this year. I, I it was just Adam, that chart they put on and it was literally it's fucking crazy. all the way back for the last like fucking 10 years, whatever. It's all I Brazilian. It's just, it was just yeah. Adam in there. <laughs> like it was fucking wild to look at, isn't it? Yeah. Like crazy. I, think, I think they've just been doing it for longer. Yeah. That all the sources there, like everywhere now, there's like, like we're, we're all learning from like, from them as when Brazilians have come over, isn't it? And so I teach everyone, they're just, they're just ahead of us. Whereas I think Nogi, it don't know, it just seems to be more of a much uh, even playing field. So it's easier for the, I guess the European athletes or American athletes to break onto that world stage and start earning money, start getting more noticed and stuff yeah. like that. You know? I think it's a bit more exciting to watch as well, Nogi, and I think that's why it's doing a bit better. You know what I mean? For the average person. No, you know what I think it is? I think to the average person, they can relate to it more. Yeah. Because it's like, the FC they've, they've watched fighting. MMA yeah. and stuff. If you just watch two guys in the jacket and the, the gi having, having a scrap, you don't really understand it. But I, because I, obviously I understand the gi, I still find it very exciting to watch. Like if I watch someone like Mika or like Tyne, and I find them really, really exciting to watch. I think it's amazing. And like Leandro Lowe, when he was alive, was the best. Like I think he's, the most the best competitor competitor to watch ever i'd say across gi and no gi if you're there live watching him in his match it was just the it was the best honestly still now i just wish i could still watch him compete now yeah. i think he was just the best and obviously when he died so it was like awful wasn't it? and it's like gi really took a hit then but then you still have the guys now like mika and Tynan. he's unbelievable isn't he? i was Unreal, watching him last yeah. night it was uh top 25 submissions just of uh 2024 Gi worlds and it was fucking like yeah, he's unbelievable. He, he was just like highlight after highlight of him and he, he just makes it look so easy he doesn't even look like he's fucking breaking a sweat half the time 
Yeah, it's just basics done well, and it Fuck obviously yeah. he's super physical and yeah. very flexible and strong. But he just nothing he does, to be honest, looks like some mental technique. No, it looks that's like basics. I mean. Like he'll just pull clothes guard and get to your back and tap you. But it's just like how he does that to the best people in the world. It's <laughs> yeah. just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. he mate, he's honestly yeah, yeah amazing. Fucking crazy. But I think yeah, so just the average watcher. If you never watched it before, you're just getting into it. I guess you can relate more to Nogi. I guess so. I think people from outside like obviously I've not been in jiu-jitsu too long but before I started jiu-jitsu I thought it was like karate or something you know I thought it was a bit gay yeah. I did I used to like <laughs> call them like sensei, karate, sensei Craig or something you know what I mean like they really understand it you know whereas you understand like no gi and then understand Man, grappling I, start, a bit more. I started in school mate so I had years of that <laughs> yeah did you <laughs> yeah, that did bullshit you? Yeah. every day yeah oh mate that's just like mate come to the gym then if you think it's karate come come down yeah <laughs> <Just mate>. like, <laughs> come down and get choked the fuck out yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's mad. When you did uh, the Nogi Wells, you said it was purple belt. Yeah. So what was the rule set with like, leg locks? Uh, purple belt? I just, just straight for a lock. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess then like the evolution into those systems that you mentioned, like when did that really kind of start taking off for you? When, you, when did you really start focusing on that? When I fully switched to Nogi, yeah. I had to change my game because in the Gi, I played a lot of lapel guards and stuff. And some people can do the same game, Gi and Nogi. Like for example, Marcelo Garcia did the same game. He did so well in the gi. I think he's like a four or five time world champion in the gi and then a four four time world champion ADCC. So, but he played the same game. And he just took the grips away. And I always liked that idea like when he spoke about that. Like he said that you want to do just both and just change the grips. But I, in gi, I just used to utilize the lapels. It's like, it feels like cheating. So then when I took the gi off, I was like, no, I couldn't do that. So I had to like relearn every, not relearn, but I had to like change everything. So now when I go back to the gi, I'm try I don't have that the gi arsenal anymore. I just I it's like you can your brain can only remember so many things. Yeah. And for me, when I've put all this new info in to no gi, it's like all the gi info is gone. Honestly, I feel like I used to know everything in the gi. Not everything. I wasn't I couldn't do everything, but you could I could I would know loads of techniques, positions, intricate lapel games, everything. I don't know any of that anymore. Mm. It's all gone from my mind. Honestly, I can't remember anything. Weird. It's mad. Right? Yeah. Your brain can only remember like if you showed me, I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember I used to do this, but like it's not in my head when I'm training and I can't remember any of the sequences I used to do. You say that to me a lot, don't you? Like where you've trained for so long and then we'll do something, I don't know, we'll do a class or whatever. You're like, oh, I remember this. <laughs> like, yeah. you haven't done it for years. George like... sure did that back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Your brain can only remember so many things at one time. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously I've got all these new now systems integrated into my Nogi game and all these different things I do. Then when I go to the gi, yeah, I just suck, man. <laughs> Lost it all. It's so weird though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's effectively the same thing, but it's so far it's apart this, now. Isn't I it? think it's very different so, now. Yeah, Before yeah. the the no gi just used to be the gi guys taking off the gi and like having a sweaty scrap. That's what it was, wasn't it? But now you had the the Danaher guys come in. I think they really systemized everything first and you saw them just destroy everyone. In with within what they did, and then I think everyone started following and copying, and now you're seeing this. It's like a completely different world now. Mm. What do you make of the, the comments from some of the old school guys about leg locks, about they're like cheap and an easy option? <laughs> I'm probably right, and it? it's a bit cheap. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if you get leg locked, you're like, oh, did he really tap me? Nah, did he fuck? <laughs> so, but um, I guess they're kind of cheap, but you can't you can't ignore them. You have to learn them. You do have to learn them, but I, I understand what you mean. It's definitely more satisfying in an, uh, a choke or something like that, but I, I use them all the time. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but they're still effective, aren't they? And they're fucking terrifying for most people Mate. as well, I think. Yeah. We speak about that in the car a little bit, weren't we? Like, most people, as soon as you get a leg, they're like, what? Yeah. Fucking shit themselves. Yeah, I think people are getting more there. accustomed to them now, yeah. but I think when, like, the DDS started coming through, when was that? Probably, like, what, 2015, maybe? I don't know. Was that around that time, was yeah, it? Where Gordon so. Ryan started coming yeah. up and stuff? I think... They were just leg locking everyone. Literally, people were just looking at them. They had no clue what was going on. Like before, I learned leg locks. I was getting leg locked in competitions when I do with heel hooks. I had zero idea. You see, someone put me in saddle, and I'm just like, I just tap. I'm just, like, I have no clue. I think that's game over. Then I'm finished. You know, but there was no like defensive moves straight. Away. I just wasn't doing anything. I had no idea. So like when I come to Nogi, I had to literally because I had, I didn't have two bad attacks. They weren't amazing, but I didn't have like proper slick attacks but I had some attacks I had a good straight foot lock always and I had like a sloppy heel hook from here and there but nothing no no like systems I had zero defense like zero nothing because no one in my team my, my team's more of a gi team mm -hmm. so we never played with heel hooks we kind of learned them but no nothing to the extent where you'd if you went against a good leg locker 
you I'll just get smoked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I had to fully like learn that. That was the hardest bit for me. Not not really anything else. That was the what I had to put the most time into. Yeah, I think I think probably part of that that opinion comes from that the old school gear guys, like you say, they would just take off the gear and have a scrap, and then because it's been systemized and it is a whole new thing they need to learn. Yeah, if you're fucking forty year old ex world champion, it could be asked to learn all that fucking yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, do you even need to really? They sort of got a school and they can teach everyone like mm. pins and every all the fucking horrible shit they do. Yeah, but if you if you're going to switch to nogi professionally, you have to learn. Even if you don't want to do I was it, about to say, yeah. you have to learn how to defend. Otherwise, you will just get tapped by someone who does. At, at the top ends, you have to be a leg locker. For actually, don't no, you, the you don't have to be a leg locker. No, but you, you have think? to. No, you don't have to. But you have to know how to defend. You have to be very capable to defend and avoid there's plenty of ADCC champions who've never leg locked anyone but like they're, they're very good at defending rather than staying out of them or when they're in they're very good at staying calm and getting out getting them out yeah you can see like someone like um, Augusto Mendes I think Tanquinho I'm pretty sure he won ADCC before I'm pretty sure yeah he won ADCC before he was a gee guy went to Nogi won ADCC and he beat Eddie Cummings every time they fought he was just he was not I don't think he was good at leg locks but like well, you never see him leg lock anyone. I'm not saying he's not good, but I think um, when Eddie Cummings put him in the leg lock positions, he would always just get out. Like he had sick defense. You know, that's, that's, good, what, that's what you need. So if you're going to be a positional player, yeah. or like not go for the legs, that's perfectly fine. But you need to be comfortable in all the leg locking positions so you can counter. And that that's like a good strategy as well because some passes uh, are really good at making you tired when you attack their legs. That's like a good like when someone's chewing on your legs, they can't get it, and they're putting a lot into finishing. They can't get you. That's very fatiguing for the guy on bottom. To be honest, so like good passers will like get entangled. They'll the bottom player will get tired, then they'll pass them dominating positionally. You know, so that's you need. It's a skill you need. Mm. Can't avoid it forever. You have to just yeah. learn yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Learn it. Do like hours and hours and hours of specific rounds, starting in the leg entanglements. Like I would say, be doing them every week, yeah. every session. I do them, starting mm. in entanglements, attack and defend. Yeah, yeah. Every every sparring session, I do more positional training. So we always start around from. A position let's say so like what we're doing at the moment when we're doing sparring rounds and stuff we'll start let's say it'll be a six minute round but i'll start and mount on you and then we'll do a round whatever then on the reset if there's any taps or anything on a reset you'll start and mount on me so we're always starting like in mount or yeah or we'll do like specific rounds where if you escape you win whatever we start again but then we've been doing like a lot of open rounds recently but we're always starting from then we'll do ones with leg entanglements. You can choose whatever leg entanglement you want to start with. Then it'll be my, on the reset, it'll be my turn. And we just do the normal round, but we start from there. So we'll always be doing rounds, rather someone on our back, mount, leg entanglements, arm bars, everything. Mm -hmm. That I'll always integrate that into every session. Yeah, that's cool. If you, um, when you're doing the isolation training with leg entanglements, mm -hmm. what's your kind of highest percentage starting position that you would normally choose? Um, I'm pretty good in saddle and I'll start actually, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of them good for me, yeah. 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 Do you find that like I don't know, I think we're still obviously quite new to that game and mm. and and being in that position, just feeling a, a little bit of it today is super tight. I almost feel like from being in that position deep to start, like do you find that people can sort of create some sort of defense from that when you're training? Or is it pretty much just quick finish switch, quick finish switch? No, so if I'm training with my students or people, I'll always like give them Yeah space you know because mm. this doesn't help me just like yeah, blasting yeah. submissions so i always just be like chaining stuff together yeah i think that's important like if you're the best in your room you need to be able to make the best of what you've got so you to do that you need to constantly be like giving and taking giving and taking if you're just mowing for everyone you're not you're not even really improving that much mm. you know because i train the majority of my training is with my students like 95 percent, and i'm by far the best guy in the room do you know what i mean so if i didn't want to no one could no one could put any pressure on me do you know what i mean so but then I still improve all the time because I'm constantly giving different bits. I'm constantly letting people work, getting deep on things. I'm constantly working. I try to like go to, um, I don't try not to exert myself too much. You know, so I'm constantly just trying to be technical. Mm -hmm. If you watch Gordon Ryan train, I've seen the videos of him. He just looks like he's barely trying, but he's always he's a good training partner. He always lets everyone just like play around. Like he's never, you never, it's when he's turned it on, he does beat the guys up but he is he also gives a lot as well like he lets he'll let people on stuff deep on things and he'll get out and like so he's constantly improving he's the best guy in the room right it's so fascinating though isn't it like because we, we talk about it all the time how he's able to control someone with like 
I don't know, it doesn't even look like he's trying that much. I think that's because he's done so much training. Just he, do, he Obviously, man, he's a massive, strong dude, isn't he? But he doesn't look like he uses it so much. Like when he's training a lot of the time, he is very playful. He's very, like, it looks like he's quite gentle. I think he does try to do everything with minimal effort. Do you know what I mean? So you, don't, you never see him, I don't know. You know when you go with someone, they're spazzing on things. He never does that really, ever. You never see him do that. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. No, he's just he's... constantly being technical and trying to be efficient with the movement. Like, if you can do something without putting any effort, it's just you're doing it really well then. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I'm always trying to chase as well. Try and do everything. Be able to tap everyone in the room with as little effort as possible is what you want. Yeah. Who do you typically go to when you want um, some hard training rounds? I go to London <clears throat> Grapple once a week. Me and my student Will would go. Um, Tuesday morning, comp class is good. Bunch of different black belts come. That's always good. Yeah. I've been going to the Los, Los Banditos now. It's uh, that gym in, in Labrook Grove. Uh, one of Roger Gracie's black belts, Joe, just opened up a gym. So a bunch of people have been going there to train. It's good training. But it'd just be like a once a week thing like that because I train a lot anyway. So I only need like maybe once or twice a week hard rounds maybe then the rest I can just do like technical stuff really. I'm training every day. I'll do like two sparring sessions yeah. a day. I'll probably like, I would do over 10 rounds sparring every day but I'm not like, if I just went like as hard as fuck I would uh, I'd burn out, I'd get hurt but I only go hard maybe once or twice a week. Yeah, sensible mate. Um, obviously with the ADCC trial win, Mm -hmm. and the way you did it everybody knows you for the leg lock game mm -hmm. when we had Owen Jones on he was saying that actually your top pressure is fucking disgusting as well <laughs> um, do you feel like you're a leg lock player or do you feel like you're well rounded or a top player what's, what's your I feel like I'm well rounded obviously I'm not good on the wrestling but I'm good top and bottom but yeah I just never wrestled really we don't really have access to really good wrestling mm. especially where I live there's just no one really to be yeah, honest yeah. So. yeah we all say that there's nothing around is there yeah maybe up north a little bit but yeah not down south yeah no nothing down where I am so yeah, I, I'm, I'm well-rounded top and bottom. But I'd say definitely my strengths mostly. I mean, I'm definitely, if, I can definitely pass good people's guard for sure. But I feel like my guard's solid. I'd say I'm well-rounded. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just Frank, Frank said today, Frank was at the end of the thing, like, fucking hell, his guard is class. <laughs> He's like, I couldn't get past it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And then when you kind of like approach the ADCC trials... I mean, it sounds like you probably went in with a game plan and some systems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you did you like identify that maybe the sort of guard passing and leg locks were a weakness in the guys in the bracket, or did you just go for your A game? So I did the first trials. I've only ever done two ADCC comps in my life ever. That was the first trials in Warsaw last year, and um, this trial is the one that I won. So the first trials I did in Warsaw, I I lost the quarterfinals, and I was just passing everyone's guard that one, and. I ended up getting swept and losing 2-0 to a good guy, a Polish guy. And I was just like, oh man, that was so silly. I shouldn't have lost because I was, I was dominating the match really. I was on his back for ages with one hook. I just couldn't get the second hook. It was like, like I, I just dominated the entire match but give up a sweep. And I was just like, how have I just lost that? And then I was, I was just preparing for the next trial. I was like, right, I'm just going to play guard. As long as I can pull guard and not get scored on, no one's going to pass my guard. I knew that. And so it's just be like my whole training camp was right. Like, I can pull at the start and attack aggressively. If after six minutes we go to overtime, I need to pull in a way where I don't concede the negative because you can't sit the guard again. You get a negative point, so I need to like shoot a double leg or something like that. And then all my training camp was around that. As so I knew if I could get to my guard, no one in the division could pass my guard. I knew that. So it's just like, how can I... So then that takes me out of the equation of getting beaten on points, if I can sort that out. And I was thinking, how are they going to submit me from top? They're going to have to rather pass my guard or drop back on a leg. I mean, that's the only two ways they're going to catch me. And I was confident no one was going to pass me. So they're going to have to drop back on a leg. Then we're in a leg lock battle, which is where I was training a lot of. So I think that was just a much better game plan going in. Mm. So I was just, yeah, focusing on that. And then, yeah, end up paying off. Yeah, nice, man. That was fucking sick. And, and was there anybody, like, obviously Adam was in the bracket. Yeah. Um, was there anybody in particular that you're like, okay, this might be uh, obviously a tough match more so than the <laughs> others, perhaps? Um. The three best guys in the division, other than me, in my opinion, were Adam, Vegard, and Chris Wojcik. And they were all on my side. So I was looking at the brackets thinking, right, there's some good Polish lads as well. Don't get me wrong, they were sick as well. But like, I just thought these are uh, the best, probably the best three, the biggest names, let's say. And they're, yeah, they're all on my side. Vegard was super tough. I knew he would be tough just because he's very big. He's um, strong, a wrestler. He's done ADCC trials a bunch of times. 
I pre- he got bronze and Nogi Worlds at Black Belt. Like, he's just a seasoned competitor and he's a big, big lad. Like, when I saw him at the weigh-ins, I was like, fuck, he's way bigger than me. Like, I was like, he's a unit. Like, <laughs> 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 I was thinking shit. But um, I knew he'd be tough. Chris Wojcik is tough. I've trained with him before. He's really good on legs also. So I knew that'd be tough uh, to play that sort of game with him. Mm-hmm. And obviously Adam's tough because Adam's like one of the goats, man, doing mm. of European Jiu Jitsu. I knew he'd be tough, but I was I was pretty confident with all of them going in that I could like, execute my game, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And explain that feeling, mate, when you won the final. How was that? Who did you beat in the final? Ben Bennett. Ben Bennett. Mm. Yeah. What's he like? Uh, what as a person like, yeah, on the no. mat oh, either I don't, I don't really know he's, me- he's mental <laughs> he's, <laughs> men- he's mental it, yeah. there's a video yesterday I've seen him post have you seen that no, he double legs exactly. Christian Osbeck through the wall <laughs> 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 oh mate it's so fucking funny you gotta watch it it's that they're at that lo- the Lost Banditos and there's like a fire exit right. <laughs> and Ben like double legs him and he falls through the door honestly it's so is fucking it? funny fucking honestly up. it's hilarious you, see, Chris- <laughs> you see Christian go through the door oh mate I wish I was there so funny yeah, he's, he's cool mate he's a funny guy he's just mental yeah, right, <laughs> he's, right. just, he's just crazy the mad dog, <laughs> <laughs> mad dog yeah, yeah but he's dangerous on the mat and obviously I fought him as a purple belt we fought in the gi and I put him to sleep with a triangle and I hadn't really seen him so much since he's just in Bradford's as far from me yeah do you know what I mean so I just never really seen him again to be honest like in, in we'd never been in the same division again I wouldn't yeah. say I can't I don't think we have and I was thinking when I saw him I was thinking I swear I know that guy from somewhere but I didn't remember we fought before. I had no clue. I was thinking, I swear I know this guy from somewhere. And then um, he come up to me before the final and was like, he was like, you fucking remember when you put me to sleep with a triangle when we were purple belts? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fucking first compon comp a purple belt. <laughs> it was funny. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, that's the guy, yeah. Yeah, but he's... um. He's decent, man. Yeah, Dang, yeah. Dangerous as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. He, he submitted everyone on his side of the bracket and he submitted some good people. Like He had some good Polish lads I'd trained with on his side of the bracket. And he um, I don't, he didn't f- face either of the Polish lads, but he tapped the people who beat them. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. He had some good people on his side and he yeah, he tapped everyone. So he's good. Yeah, it felt amazing to win. Mm. Yeah, it felt unreal. Mate, it felt like a lifetime's worth of work. Yeah, I bet. It led to that moment, yeah. You, you've been training since you were young, then, yeah? 14, yeah. How old are you now? 27. Okay. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah it's like a lifetime worth of work for, for that day, you know? Yeah, yeah no, it was amazing. Yeah, awesome. How's the, uh, how's the kind of reception been since? Like, obviously, you've been busy with seminars. What's the sound Mate, of it? It's been, yeah, I'm like a, obviously not like a completely life-changing, but it's been life-changing for me, mate, to be fair. I was had like fuck all money, like nothing, mm-hmm. zero, zilch. And like, so it's like, if you lose this one, you're like, right, I got to just get back on the grindstone. We've got two more years to the next one. And it's like, that would have been hard because me and my miss obviously trying to save to get placed and everything. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm earning no money. It's hard. But this has just been yeah, life changing for me. I've got, I've had maybe, I've had like 20 to 30 seminars since. Amazing. Yeah, which has been good. I've got loads booked after ADCC also. Yeah, yeah. Sponsors went right up. Got loads of different sponsors. All money's gone right up. Everything. I've got a new car. Same for ours now. It's like, it's good. Yeah, moment, it's man. good, mate. It must, be, it must be so satisfying though because I think so many people give up on like their dreams and what they want because of money and because of lifestyle. Yeah, and then yeah. you're just fucking grinding away and then eventually kind of get into ADCC. It must fucking feel amazing. Yeah, it was good, man. I was just really stubborn. I was like, I'm gonna, I can do it. I was like very, very stubborn in my ways. I was like, I know, because each, each year or each month, every six months, I was getting so much better all the time. And I was like, man, at some point, I was thinking, if I just keep, if I stay healthy and I keep on this trajectory, there's going to be a point where I have to break through. I have to. You know, I was kept. I kept getting better, better training with better people. And I would start beating. I was beating like obviously the training room's different, yeah. but I was training with world level people, and, and I was beating them in yeah. the gym. And I was yeah. like, man, this got. I might. I definitely can get there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just need to perform on the day, do everything right, do make all the sacrifice, do everything properly, like a proper athlete, and then eventually it's going to happen. Yeah, if you can, just the thing. It's taken me what 12, 13 years to then to achieve this. Now, not everyone's like Owen who can do it really young. That's just like, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm super talented or anything. Like, I'm not like a freak. Like, he, I mean, little Owen's like a freak, man. He's just, he's sick, man. Right away, man. He's just like born sick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's born he's good, good in, instantly. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. He's born good. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not, I'm like a normal person. Do you know what I mean? I had to grind really, really hard for a very long time with no breaks, nothing, no stopping, nothing, just to get that. But it can be done. Mm. But you have to be willing to, to suck. Yeah. You have to be like, bit messed up in the head just <laughs> super stubborn just keep keep grinding on it yeah that's it mate so all that work you win the trials yeah. qualify for the worlds yeah and then craig jones 
it makes an invitational <laughs> yeah <laughs> and kind of fucks it up a tad like yeah. what, are your, what are your thoughts on that whole situation obviously it's a shame that it's, it's taken some of the shine from ADCC well a lot of the shine I would say but you know it's for a good thing because we're actually getting paid now we're getting paid for ADCC now are you? We're getting paid. Okay, yeah, so they've getting, changed it. We're, they, they've changed already. They said they've given us a, a certain amount. They said this can change. If the ADCC does well, we'll pay us more. But he said the minimum is going to be like whatever the number is, and which is decent. You know, so I was like, oh, man, it's actually for something good. You know, and we're getting our own rooms now. We're getting our own accommodation, which is like, so it's, it's made the, the oh, event. Oh, so before you didn't get paid all your own accommodation? We, no, we did, but we had to share rooms. So oh, me and I would have to share a room or something. But now we're getting our, all our own rooms. Oh, nice. We're getting paid, which is like, so obviously it's taken some of the shine away from ADCC, which is obviously a shame. But, you know, we're getting paid. And I think it's a step in the right direction, probably. You know, yeah. and then this is going to be the first time... ADCC athletes, I guess, are getting paid, I think, to do mm. it. So, And when you say you're getting paid, I won't ask the figure, but um, is it like enough to cover, obviously, expenses and then still actually make a bit of a profit as well? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, they pay for the flights and everything. They pay for your flights, food, accommodation, wow. and then we're getting our money on top, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah it's all right, man. It's yeah. decent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, It'd be the most I've ever been paid to compete. Let's let's just say that. It's, yeah. it's not amazing, but I'm not saying I've been paid a lot of ways. And as well, though, it's like <laughs> it's actually being there, competing, doing it all, and then, like you said, with the seminars and everything else, it changes your life in a different way. You know, it's yeah. I think if you can it market it properly, if you can do that, but obviously, I don't want this to be my only ADCC. I want to do well in this one, come back to the next one. Yeah. Hopefully, now this is just the start of like a long career. You know, I can stay healthy, keep it going for as long as like my body can keep going for, but. Yeah, to be there, to go there, is like a huge, huge achievement. And there's only been a handful of men from the UK and women from the UK to go, right? There's not been many yeah, not ever. Many, like, what, how many years has it been going? 30? Yeah. So yeah. Almost yeah. Some, something like that, like close to that anyway. And there's not been many, you know, so to, to go there and do that, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge, it's the biggest achievement of my life, getting there. Yeah, exactly. So it can, yeah. yeah, and it can do a lot for your career, even if, even if I did it, and didn't compete again. I could probably use that in a way to to keep earning decent money and yeah, stuff think, like that. You I know, think but so, mate. I think yeah. Like, yeah, I think you can do. Obviously, I'm I'm young man. I'm not even in my prime <laughs> yet. Jimmy, yeah, yeah, so yeah. keep keep going. Yeah, obviously your your division being under eighty eight is kind of one of the ones that I've I've seen a couple of people leave the division. Yeah, I guess there's like good and bad points to that. Some of those people you might not need to run into, but do you worry that people might think that that would potentially like devalue the, the, the division at all? Potentially, but you still got the champ in there, John Carlo. I know you have like a lot of the top guys are who left, Tackett left, Rotolo. Mateus Denise left, Arna Flanagan left, yeah, Rotolo. Rotolo left. There was another one. I can't remember. I'm, I feel bad now, but there's there, yeah some good people left. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, it's a shame because I would love to compete against someone like Rito Ty Rotolo or some of that. Yeah, these, this cool, is like, it? Yeah, <laughs> just fucking legends, cool, man. It? Yeah. I would love, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of tough matches, man. I want to go there and have one of the toughest yeah. matches, you know. That's what I want. So it's a shame, but, you know, at least it's not 77. 77 got butchered. <laughs> yeah. so a lot of people left there. But then in 77, you still have Mika there, right? Yeah. Mika's still there. I'm pretty sure Dante Leon's still there. The, the division's still, still sick, yeah. man. It's still good, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's no. still good, so I think. Uh, I think, yeah, like you said, it's it's got its advantages and disadvantages. It's it, Craig. What Craig's done, he's got you paid straight away. Yeah. So what he's done is actually kind of a good thing. If he's even gone around it the wrong way or the right way, it's it's up to people to decide, really, in it. But I think overall, I think it will it will help everyone. Yeah, over I over mean, time, I think it will help. Everyone. I, th I think it's it's helped. Yeah, it's helped already. So yeah, it's helped I think already, in future yeah. they wouldn't want anything like this to ever happen again. So they've got to do something. Yeah. But man, the event's going to be really cool. It's a shame because yeah, I think the event's going to be really cool in T-Mobile and stuff. I think yeah. it's going to be sick. Yeah, I think the only shame is, is like you said, just not everyone getting together. You know what I mean? Everyone, you like you said, you want to you want to fight with Solo. You want to fight. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's fucking like a little bit just shit scrapped out, for my life. Am um, I then? <laughs> ev no one's there. <laughs> just just my mum, my missus in the audience. Just like, <laughs> At least you win, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, I think it's still going to be stacked yeah, as you say. Like, it'll be cool. Yeah, it'll still be good. Yeah, man. I'm still there. Like, Don't like, new, fucking new, animal, new wave mate, is any. still there. So there's still like many of the top competitors in the world. Looking at your division, mate, who do you kind of like? Who do you kind of think is going to be maybe the the kind of potential biggest challenge for you if you run into him? Got to be Bedoni in it now yeah. at the moment. Surely he's the champ, isn't he? So, and then you don't have Ty in there. Yeah, it's, man, it's, the division's still stacked. It's like anyone you look at, you're like, oh, it's a hard one. But like, <laughs> yeah, Bedoni probably just because he's 
the champ, you yeah. know. Any, anyone else? Right. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone brings a different challenge, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, some of them are like big, strong positional players. Mm -hmm. Some of them are like, yeah, sick on the legs, you know, good at defending the legs. Some of them are just well rounded, like John Carlo. There's so many good people. The replacements they've got are great. Yeah. They have amazing people in there. So, man, so it's a yeah, tough division. Yeah. Have you competed against any of them before? Um, How about like Santeri uh, or anyone? Uh, yeah. I fought yeah. Santeri, but he's a good friend of mine. I'm actually going to be training with him in the next few weeks. Nice. So, but yeah, we, fought, we became friends because we fought on Polaris on the do you remember the squads mm -hmm. do you remember that it was Europe versus UK and Ireland yeah. and I fought Santeri in one of that little five minute matches it was funny he popped my foot in a steamer lock and I popped his foot in an Aoki lock and it was a draw at the end and I sent him a picture <laughs> of my foot the next day it was like fuck you man you've hurt my foot and my foot was like bruised and he was like fuck you you've hurt my foot and sent a picture <laughs> of his foot <laughs> and then we became friends we started chatting and then he said I think it was in COVID he was like why don't you come to Malaga because it was just open you could train and I ended up going to Malaga with Dara O'Connell mm -hmm. um, Tom Halpin was there that time I think Richie and I think Marcus was there also Marcus Phelan yeah, we all went there to train for a few weeks. It was sick, man, and COVID. And then we just all become friends. And I've been going to Sun Tours every year. Class. Yeah. yeah, decent. And then looking at the other divisions as a fan, like which, which kind of potential matches are you most excited about? For me? Yeah. To compete against? No, no, as a fan to watch, to like spectate. Oh, at the whole event? Yeah, yeah. Um... So obviously, I think Gordon's back in his division now, isn't he? Awesome. No, he's doing super fights. And he's doing two super fights now. Two super fights. He was, I, I literally looked last night, he's in the division. Is he? What do you mean? So he's doing two super fights and a division. Yeah. Are you sure? According, <laughs> according to last night. No way. Really? Grab your phone. Check it. Go on. Going to. Yeah. yeah. No fine. way. That's what it said on the website. Really? Yeah. That seems a bit. Uh, yeah, that seems a bit mad. Yeah, just Google uh, ADC ADCC competitor list. Go on the ADCC website. Plus ninety nine. Yeah. What is Merigali doing under ninety nine? Yeah. Well, mate, to be honest, whenever he competes, I learn so much. Mm. I love watching it. I always learn so much from watching it. I think more than yeah, anyone. He is. Fuck. Male plus not Matt, Matt, I stand yeah. corrected. I'm sorry, it. man. Fuck, that's crazy. So he's in it. I, don't wow. know, I don't know when that went in, but I literally looked last night and saw and I was as surprised as you. Yeah. Two super fights. Yeah. Yeah, damn. <laughs> well, man, that's, that's <laughs> like a... Um, mate, it's like Yuri, Hannah, and the, and the, and the fucking division. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, I fought Josh Ingham before. He's in my division now. He just got announced the other day. The fucker man, he he mashed me up before. So I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to get I want to get that one back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be a good event, man. I think I'm gonna obviously have like a lot of people both both monitors on. I think CJI and then obviously I think everyone is. Yeah, I think yeah. everyone's gonna probably be at whatever one and then watching the other one. I think it's gonna be good. But yeah, I can't wait to watch Gordon compete. Then that's a lot of matches you get to watch. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that'd be good just to watch him on it and just like every time see, watch him, uh, like... with his health issues, you never know when his career is gonna end. Yeah. And when it's done, it's done, isn't it? I would love to train with him at some point. I would love to just, yeah, just to just to try and absorb some of the knowledge. But to, to watch him compete, we might be, this could be the last one. You never know, mate. Yeah, because he's had, he's had loads of stomach issues this year. Again, yeah, he's, he? he's, like, mate, he's, it looks like he's on death's door half the time. So yeah. it's like, you don't know when he's going to stop competing. Could be, this could be the last event he does. It wouldn't surprise me, mate. I, I think if he retires on top unbeaten like he is like he's smashed that's what I'm saying if he like, wins the division he wins the two super fights he's gonna it's like what else he got proof you know what I mean like what else he got yeah, proof you know what yeah. I mean like I think that's the plan for him probably he's gonna just then sell instructionals and obviously he's very, very very wealthy man do you know what I mean you can just chill then and he doesn't yeah. have to do any more but um, I always learn a lot when I watch him compete yeah yeah hope he just don't you know, hang on too much, and then and then he starts losing, and then it loses that bit of fucking magic in it. You know that yeah. he's, that he's kind of built up. Yeah, no, that'd be good. What do you uh, what do you make of Craig Jones and Gabby? <laughs> it's just it's classic Craig Jones, and it? it's just a freak show match. It's gonna be funny. I wonder if he just goes all out and taps her quick. Because if he went 100, percent obviously he's gonna tap her <laughs> yeah. in 30 seconds. No, I, I think he said that. He said he, he said, <laughs> he said I'm, I'm gonna treat it properly. Like he's gonna fucking go for it. Do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon he will. Uh, I reckon he will. I reckon he'll, I reckon he'll just fucking annihilate her within. A minute. I think that might be quite anticlimactic for people though. Any everyone might like want like a like a like a fun back and forth and he just runs through in like 20 seconds. I don't think that'd be cool. He might have to let it. Mate, you reckon? Edge it a little bit. Imagine yeah. if she gets him in some, mate, she's fucking got nah, a lot of weight on him. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. No way. Nah. No way. No, I don't think so. Has Mikey, uh, Mikey had his opponent announced yet? Oh, I imagine if that's Pato, man. You think so? Oh, I imagine. I don't know if it is. I don't know, but like imagine if it is, that'll be, that'll be huge. Gotta be, innit? 
Yeah, maybe. I see. That's crazy. That would be a good match, to be fair. Yeah, that'll be really and good. that, uh, but I heard some people saying it might be Demetrius Johnson, which I, which I think is like might get people watching it. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily be interested in it. I wouldn't be interested in that match. I wouldn't watch it. Mm. Well, maybe I'd watch it, but I wouldn't be like, oh, yeah. fuck, I want to watch that. It's just yeah. gonna get whitewashed. But getting someone like Mighty Mouse in, getting like yeah, one of the goats in MMA, it, yeah. I think that'd be quite cool to bring. It's like they got Rockhold in there. He's a sick grappler too, but I mean, they're getting like some MMA guys in there just to like... Rockhold's supposed to be an unbelievable grappler, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's like, a good really, grappler, really good. yeah. yeah. I've heard he's well good, yeah. Yeah, he said he's tapped Craig a couple of times recently. Big <laughs> athletic like, beast, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that'd be good. Any predictions for like both divisions? What ones? Both. Oh, yeah. well, CJI. Yeah, uh, yeah. C C yeah, CJI. Um... I don't know. I have to look at the competitor list, really. Mm. Obviously, you've got Joseph Chen. looks unbelievable, doesn't he? Yeah. At the minute. I'd, I'd need to look at the divisions to probably give yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Chen looks like the GOAT at the minute. Yeah, we'll hey, see. He's so man. good, isn't he? Yeah. Just fucking... He looks effortless, mate, when he's, yeah. when he's fucking working. It's yeah, like... Yeah. Oh, Victor Hugo probably might win the big one. Yeah. Big like, oh, Nicky Rod. It's going to yeah, probably be I one. I don't know, know the rule set. Is it just sub only? Well, it's, it's three five minute rounds, isn't it? Like Aiga. Yeah. So I think it, that they're also adopting like an MMA or boxing. Like right. Yeah, scoring system. It, yeah. It's a so, 15 minute pit, match, isn't it? In the pit as well. Yeah. In the pit. I think someone, it's going to be hard for a heavyweight to beat Nicky Rod or Victor Hugo. I think them two are going to be the favourites, I'd say, because they're the biggest. Maybe not the biggest, but like, I know Nicky Rod's big but not that big but the most athletic the best wrestlers and stuff and Nicky Rogers looks like who can really beat him other than Gordon to be honest at this point it kind of looks like that doesn't it Owen had a good fight against him lives he yeah Owen's in it isn't he yeah I think he's yeah. a bit undersized though he's because yeah. there's some massive boys yeah, in there I, I would say Nicky Rod over to Hugo yeah. Win, yeah that one and then the under I'd, I'd probably go back to Hugo mate he's fucking <laughs> he's, he's huge he's man fucking yeah. massive, and then the under 80 yeah maybe Chen Andrew Takia looks unbelievable at the minute yeah, you got both both Rotellos in under 80 though as well. Oh, no, yeah, I think it's going to be one of them. Mm. Yeah, one of them. That's bullshit, isn't it? Because they're just going to share their money at the end, so you've got yeah. to fight them twice. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that, imagine that. Imagine, yeah. you, imagine in some, like, you beat one of them, you're like, oh, fuck, thank God. And then it's the other ones. The other one in the final, yeah, you said he's in the final. You think, fuck me. Oh, the oh, mimic, that yeah. Good. Yeah, that'd be good, fucking mate. Fucking disgusting, wouldn't it? That would just be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just fight them. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good fucking weekend of Jiu so I can't wait. Uh, what's your prep looking like then, mate? Do you go into any sort of camp? Like, obviously, you talk yeah. about the strength and conditioning, and then does that change now, like, moving forward to ADCC? Nah, strength and conditioning stuff stays the same, but um, as terms uh, of camps, I'm going to Malaga to train, like me and Olaf Flanagan, Santiri, Shuzinski are going to be there. We're all training, there's a bunch of the Polish lads coming. Um, it's going to be good. We're doing that second week of July, and then I'll be travelling to the US to compete. Yeah, nice. Oh, uh, to, to um, train, sorry, before okay. the competition. Yeah. Where you're heading in the US to? I'd rather go into Rouse or maybe B Team, I'm not sure yet. Okay. I need to sort it out, yeah. Yeah, nice. What's, uh, what's Owen doing? Is he out with J Flow still, or is he moving about? Jones? Uh, yeah. He's in Austin. Is he? With yeah. B Team, yeah. Is he B Team now? Yeah, is he? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So maybe we're going to link up with him, you think? Maybe, yeah. And one of my students who's coming to Vegas with me, he moved to New Zealand. He's coming to Austin to train six weeks before that and like doing it all in one go. So, yeah, it'd be good if we're all there. Yeah, it feels like Austin's like the mecca at the moment. It seems to be, it? yeah. Yeah, because you've got And then the tackets are there well. also. And yeah. Will's not in my division anymore, and I'm, I'm pally with them. So maybe yeah, go and train with them a little bit as well. Be sick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what does your like uh, your S&C schedule look like at the moment? Three times a week. Yeah, and what sort of work you're doing in the gym? So I do two body, full body workouts with Charles twice a week. Mm -hmm. And then I'm meant to do that on Sunday also, but I just do upper body. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no chance of doing it. Yeah. I'm not doing the plyos in pump gym, mate, and coach. There's no chance. <laughs> no fucking way. Yeah. And I just can't motivate myself to do legs on my own, so I just do yeah. upper body. Legs were pretty stiff today, mate, weren't they? Yeah, fuck, Talking yeah. like a shit himself when he yeah, came out of the car. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I do a Dorito bro workout on <laughs> Sunday, you know, just to I see it, mate. Get, get the back. You just got, a got heavy, heavy focus on the lats, the shoulders, some arms, yeah, and yeah. some chest. Yeah, it's the Dorito bro package just hit those yeah. really emphasis on the lats and shoulders yeah and you're yeah. good yeah yeah sounds good mate mate take us back to when you actually first started jiu-jitsu because obviously you said you started at school mm -hmm. um like what was the what was the motivation for that was it like watching ufc or were you actually watching jiu-jitsu at the time yeah me and my mates were like we had me and my mate reese we had the ultimate fighter on dvd yeah we okay. watched that thought it looked quite cool I can't remember i'm pretty sure i played like the ufc game i think it came out maybe at the same time or just afterwards but I, what, was that on the PS3? 
Yeah, yeah the first one. Yeah, I remember that. Undisputed. Yeah, it was. Undisputed, I can't remember. I can't yeah. remember what year that came out, but I remember playing that. But I definitely remember we had the Ultimate Fire, and I was like, right, do you want to go and do an MMA class? It looks fucking cool. And then we were like, yeah, and I just typed in MMA in Colchester, and it came up with a gym called Black Label. And then I walked into the gym, and then um, my coach, to this day, Alan, was there teaching an MMA class, but it was just basically no gi. I didn't know what Jiu Jitsu was, I went for the MMA. I didn't know, and he was just teaching us like grappling. I had no clue what Jiu Jitsu was, I didn't know mm. anything. We were just doing grappling. And I remember I got folded up by a kid, like, same size as me, same age, just completely like, beat the shit out of me. And I was like, oh, sick. And then. I started training and he it was like right before the six week like summer holidays so I just I, I was obviously friends with him and whenever he would train I would train and we'd just train every day right away like I just loved it and then started competing and I think once you start competing together you build that community and that family and I just like to be a part of that and part of the team and we're all competing together and I just got stuck in I just loved it I started competing after like two months <laughs> <laughs> three months yeah, yeah yeah two three months maybe yeah straight away just in that's class so how many, how many competitions have you done Oh, I wouldn't know. So many. I wouldn't yeah. know, yeah. Is it that much? Yeah, Serial probably. compare. Not so much these days, but when I was younger, yeah. Would you just Yeah, now I'm something. very busy with my gym, and I, I do the big ones now more than the little ones. But before, I used to be like, I used to be a nightmare, the, the local ones, mate. I was the goat of the local, the South End <laughs> Open. I think I got like <laughs> five or six gold medals from there. Just used to wreck people, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little the eagle boost every weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, used to, I used to love going to them and just fight the hobbyist dad, you know, father of three. Yeah. Just used to rip yeah. their feet off and that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. Sounds terrible. Did you ever like consider like competing in MMA or is that just off the Yeah, I did now? actually in COVID. I was proper trained, like almost took a year out of my jiu-jitsu training, to be fair. I was just doing striking and everything for a whole basically a year and then I was training at shoot fires and obviously the gym I was at at the time and I was training at London shoot fires and I remember I got the shit kicked out of me <laughs> so bad by one of the guys he said I trained, I trained with him the other day actually called Felix man this guy is an animal in MMA I think he's like 9 or 10 and 0 in prime MMA and like, his, his whole game is just like wrestles you down and punches you up like <laughs> and I had to do ground and pound rounds of him mate for like 15 minutes bro and honestly he just beat the shit out of me so bad I remember just like then I had to go with Michael Page who's fighting Ian Gary tonight yeah, yeah. and they were like yeah Taylor go with Page now and I went no to go and talk no fucking way no no he's, he's cool yeah. but it wasn't that but I went to go with him and the whole room's just spinning and I was like mate and I had to drive like two hours home with like a minor con concussion <laughs> and I was like this is so shit and I was like, <laughs> I was like fuck this man stick to, thought, stick to Jiu Jitsu honestly MMA is the best thing in the world if you're beating the guy up mm. if yeah. it's flipped mate it's the worst worst thing in the world like if you're if you're if you're like better than the guy and you're just like moving in and out like, S, like they're just they're hitting him with a crisp one too little double leg taking him down it's honestly the best feeling in the world as soon as that's flipped mate you're in hell it's awful and i was like these guys are just fucking animals mate yeah it's, like, it's, it's just got all thing, smashed noses no teeth and i'm thinking man these guys are just hard men mate i don't want to do this i'm good enough for jiu-jitsu to make money from that <laughs> fuck this yeah. <laughs> not, not telling me like the middle ground of combat jiu-jitsu or anything <laughs> nah mate fuck that <laughs> nah, imagine getting slapped up man no way <laughs> I, don't know, I just see mate when he got knocked out from a slap I must have been fucking oh, horrible Damien man. Anderson KO'd so and then he just yeah, banged yeah, him yeah. and then Co I fought Cody Steele a few times he's a friend of mine as well and he won that combat jiu-jitsu world yeah man he, he was slapping people so I think he's like five <laughs> or, I think he's like six or seven I know in MMA now isn't he Cody Steele do you know him no mate he just KOs everyone Oh mate, and just, I was just thinking, man, imagine us getting slapped by him. He's so athletic, he's like an athletic wrestler. Yeah. Mate, fuck that. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. just not athletic, mate. He's just gonna beat the shit out of me. <laughs> like, I won every time we've done jujitsu with each other, but like <laughs> mate, in a real fight would just do me. It's no no chance, yeah, he'd batter me. <laughs> yeah, mate, it's, it's an acquired taste, mate. I think yeah, I'm fuck mate. that. I think people are their loons, mate. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not for me. I love watching it though. I uh, really and I enjoy training it too, it's good fun. Mm. But just yeah, I just thought Oh man, it's brutal. Yeah, yeah, I just I don't want to do that to myself. Yeah. Yeah, how do you think M MVP does against Gary tonight? No, I know them both. I train with them both quite yeah. a bit, actually. Yeah. So, um, who knows? I think it could either be like a, an amazing fight or a very boring fight because they could both cancel out each other quite well because they're I both long rangey elite strikers. Yeah. Or it could be amazing. Do you know what I mean? It could be they're just going at each other, or it could be super boring. You know, just that's the thing. You just you're gonna get one of the two. When you get two elite strikers, you either get 
yeah, the best thing you've ever seen or the worst thing you've ever seen, yeah. you know? So Yeah, definitely. Let's see, it's, it's an interesting one. It's yeah. an interesting one. Both, be good. I think both, be good. both cool guys, man. Both both nice guys. Good yeah. training partners, both of them. They're both, uh, Are they? both cool to train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember when um, MVP fought uh, Semtex. And yeah. that was a similar scenario with Sam. Yeah, I, I was actually there for that. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, he just wrestled him and took him down a lot, didn't he? I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a bit of a boring one though, right? Because yeah. it was like, because yeah, both just respected each other striking so much. You don't get, you don't get to see the openings, I guess. Yeah, you know, you got two elite kickboxers there. So yeah. kind of boring, you know. But I was also there when MVP flying knee cyborg <sighs> and he's caved skulling. I remember that. Yeah. I was there live. Mate. I was no. right cage side for that. <laughs> we were there, right, Bella to London. Did you, yeah. did you hear it? You heard the smack and everyone was like, oh, and then MVP launched a Pokeball at him. That's when Pokemon <laughs> Go was a thing. Oh, yeah. He put on a hat and he launched a Pokeball at him. We were like, oh, yeah, it's fucking sick. And then Cyborg got up, mate, and you saw his head in and everyone in the crowd just went, oh, fuck. Like, mm. It was horrific, mate. It was well yeah, bad. I can imagine. I think no one even knew, man. but, mate, he's a skinny guy, but his bones are, like, made of brick, mate. It's weird, mate. It's just, like, when he when he hits people, it just destroys them. Like, mm. Have you seen that guy? He leg kicked and his whole knee just exploded. Yeah. Have you seen that? And he kicked the dude's nose and the whole dude's nose in half. They this repetition of like damage to the bone. It, it calcifies, doesn't it? So if mate, he's been doing that like for years. So, yeah, he's I mean. a very it's skinny like... guy, but he's, he's strong. But his bones are just like, it's like Wolverine, mate. You know, he's got the, the, the adamantium, the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he's like, man. Whatever he hits, he just destroys you. Breaks, yeah. yeah. But he's the friendliest guy in the gym, honestly. When you watch him fight, you wouldn't think so. But he's the nicest training partner. Super friendly, super chill. Mm. I did a little kickboxing round with him once. The coach made me do it, mate. I was like, come on, man. And he was like, nah, go on, it'll be fun, it'll be fun. And I put on a little head gear and I'm just the worst striker ever. Just like, And he was just like darting in and out. And he was just, I felt something slap my head. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it was just his foot, mate. He was just going, what that? <laughs> I slapping me with the feet and I was just like and the coach was like throw something back to him try and hit me I was like I can't you know when you're just shelling up I was like I just can't do anything it was horrendous and then he just gave me a little only a little dig like that to the body and I just went down it was horrendous <laughs> it was horrendous I was thinking fuck me man fighting him must be horrible the worst thing ever when you're cornered by him and you just can't do anything it's awful mate yeah I mean, it was his last fight wasn't it when he fought Kevin Holland Kevin Holland and yeah. you just could see how fucked off Kevin, Hol Kevin Holland yeah you just can't hit him yeah Man, they were saying though before that he's never going to beat Kevin Holland this and that because he's obviously oh, come no, from Bellator and I, I thought he was going to light him up. I but, thought he would, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but you know the comments and people in in America especially were like never, never because they don't really know him like that, do they? As, as yeah. well as as well as because he's been in Bellator. He's just so fast, man. He just needs one shot to put you out, like. Yeah, we shall see. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Interesting. You got Alex Pereira fighting. Love watching him fight, man. He's an animal. <laughs> he's, he's the guy. And he's fucking, so cool. He's like the hardest cunt in the world, and he just yeah, look at him. You think he's hard as hell. That's never. one bloke you would never <laughs> want to fight. <laughs> <Do you laughs> know, he just he's got a stare in you. Mate, it was the last fight with Jamal Hill, mate, when he got kicked in the ball. Oh, he yeah. just went. No. Nah. Have you seen Bang. Jamal Hill? Won't stop talking about him. Uh, still, really? he's still, oh, still. Jamal Hill was honestly, he's like in his mind so much still he won't stop talking about how Alex, how he's coming for Alex Pereira but <laughs> he's saying he like cheated or something he said when he said the referee he said he cheap shot him or something it's like come what? on man yeah, he got fucking kicked in the bollocks like ref went to stop him he's like no and just fucking banged him I know, I know, but he's just so oh, salty, mate. That, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. He just gives <laughs> a little hand. <laughs> it's so good, man. Yeah, he's a legend, man. He's so sick. Just got, it's so funny. I keep, I remember, I remember dying at their memes. It was like a meme of Israel Adesanya taking up golf, and then it's just Alex Pereira behind him with a little golf club like that. It's like whatever, whatever sport is he goes to, Alex Pereira is just there, <laughs> ready to beat him. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, mate, it's gonna be a good, good event tonight. Yeah, Yuri's a nutter, isn't he as well? Yeah, mate. He's a mental case. Yeah. He said Alex is trying to play. He's using magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. <laughs> I would not want to fight him either, though. Fucking hell, have you seen that? He's like screaming in the woods and that, just punching a tree all day and that. He's fucking nuts, mate. Yeah. He's a hard man as well. Yeah, but a lot of them are, mate, and they, a lot of them are fucking uninjured, didn't they? Like you said, you've got to have a, a fucking screw loose to want to pursue that as a career, haven't you? Uh, I reckon so. I've, I've, I've trained with some MMA fighters, man. They're very well spoken, like, really, like, yeah, but really something intelligent in them, people. It's so weird, but then the others something are just like them. Yuri Prohadska, mate. He's just <laughs> like punching a tree all day. Yeah. Yeah. Strange boy. Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> Hard man though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, when did you get your uh, when did you get your black belt? Uh, three years ago. Oh, was it fairly recent? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nah, I wouldn't. That's not recent, is it? Well, three years ago. I got my first degree not so long ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I imagine because you've been training for so long and been competing and doing well for so long. I for some reason thought you would have got maybe, it. Maybe four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Four years ago, maybe. Yeah. Coming yeah. up to twenty twenty. Think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I got my first degree. 
in our summer camp in Hungary, and that was last year, and that was August, man. Time just goes so quickly. Yeah, know, yeah. Like, so like, genuinely, I'm thinking it's like a few months ago, but I think, <laughs> I think it's been almost a year since I got my first degree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, sick. And you said you've got your own school now. Yeah. So when did that happen? Six months ago. Okay, and yeah. tell us about that. How's that going? Yeah, amazing, mate, yeah. Enzo Jiu-Jitsu Academy, if you're ever in Colchester. Yeah, it's, mate, it's been unreal. Yeah. Been like, yeah, because really, when I first started Jiu-Jitsu, I was like, right, my main goal is in Jiu-Jitsu. One, become a world champion. That was like my thing. My first thing was like become a world champ at any belt. That was like my, my goal when I was younger. Then then you can obviously try and get like to like the pro level and stuff, but also be able to have a gym and be able to just live from jiu-jitsu. I want to have a life where I never technically work, you know. I just want to be able to do what I want to do. And that's always what I've wanted since I was a kid. I just want to do what I want to do. That's it. I didn't really care so much at the time about money. Now I do. Obviously, perspective changes. Obviously, now I want like stuff and I want a house and for my family and stuff like that so but back in back when I was young I was like I didn't give a shit if I could just live in the gym I wouldn't care at least I'll be happy every day that was my mindset and I did not care about anything else other than just doing jiu-jitsu every day and enjoying it being happy and I thought right as long as I can make a living and do it I don't care that much about how I do in competition as long as I can just earn a living from it train every day and that's what I do and I'm not stuck doing something I don't want to do then I'm, I'm happy you know so to now to have my own gym and then it's coincided with all of this happening it's been been really good man yeah cool how many students you got now we have, almost have 100 people now yeah, that's great man yeah which is nice yeah with kids as well yeah, yeah. but almost yeah yeah so say uh, you go out become world champion like what's the long term plan is it to keep competing or would it be if you achieve that it's just going to focus on the school and, and no, coaching no I think competition's good especially if I'm healthy you know I don't want to stop it if I'm, if I'm healthy still because who knows what I could achieve you know mm. you could keep going keep going but as long as I'm healthy I think it's good to keep motivated it's good to keep I feel like I always improve when I'm competing I feel like obviously you can improve without it but when you've got a competition coming up you do natural I always say to my students it doesn't even matter how you do if you just want to fast track your jiu-jitsu just sign up to a comp it makes you makes you choose your meals better makes you get up and do the like the weight session you don't want to do makes you do, like study makes you train that bit harder do that extra round it just pushes you to be a better version of yourself because you want to perform the best and you want to win at the end of the day obviously maybe some people don't care if they lose but it's a nice feeling when you win it's the, the best feeling isn't it that's why we're all chasing when, when, is, when yeah. we compete it's the best feeling ever like I can't describe it when you win you just you get that euphoric high all day don't you For maybe a few days you're like ah oh, it's the bollocks so I feel like I would always compete as long as I, could, I was healthy just because it keeps me getting better all the time keeps yeah. me improving but then obviously when I get past a certain point I take my foot off the gas pedal a little bit and just maybe compete for fun yeah that makes sense it was something that Sam said recently actually Sam Crook and he was saying that even obviously after his injury even if he wasn't going to compete for his own benefit as a coach he feels he needs to do that to set an example and stay relevant and stay current with the the game as well yeah yeah exactly yeah because it's changing all the time yeah 100 yeah, percent. and then obviously as a coach now you've got your students like you're getting new guys coming in like what what do you get like or what's your advice to brand new students coming into jiu-jitsu on what they should focus on i think just obviously have fun enjoy the process but like um try and focus on Obviously, you need your fundamentals and stuff, but in terms of like attacks and stuff, I would develop one move at a time. Like really develop one move, make it really, really good. Make sure you can get it from everywhere. You can catch everyone, and then once you feel like you got that to a good level, then move on. Don't try and learn everything at once. Simple. No one can do that. And like the pros will do one thing at a time. Yeah. Like we'll be like studying a position or uh, a submission or a sweep. Anything what you're working on, we'll be doing that for a prolonged period of time until we've got it in. Then we move on to something else. It's not you're not you can't juggle too many things at once. Yeah, that makes sense. And when you say focus on one move, would you mean like one attack that you try and enter from various positions? Yeah. So let, let's say for example triangles. You can do them from bottom. You can do them from top. You can set them up from kimuras. You can set them up from the back. It's like you can then figure out once you've got let's say the front triangle down, like. In the gear, it'd be easier to do that with collar sleeve, boom, pull into a triangle, right? Once you've nailed that, then you can start working on reverse triangles from kimuras, back triangles from the back. You just, like, master that position, try and really, yeah, like... My my student, Will, was... um He's good, he's a purple belt. I said to him, look, let's... He started, he just naturally... Like, he's very small, he's very short. He's, like, 5'5". Five, five. He says he's 5'7", but he's not. He's a liar. He's 5'5". Five five. <laughs> I measured him once to me because he's a, he's a fucking liar. But uh, he um, he's just naturally started liking triangles. And because he's so small and his legs are so short, he has to, to get it, he has to be able to proper cut the angle, which is the hardest bit to learn on a triangle, I think, to proper cut that angle. But he can triangle anyone, regardless how big they are, just because he cuts the angle so well. 
and he just naturally started gravitating towards them. So I was like, look, let's just work on these. Let's just get this, let's nail it. And don't focus on nothing else. I just want you to rep your triangles. That's all. We're going to master it. And with, this is when we did more gi. And like he would enter a local comp, like gi and no gi, and would have 10 matches, nine or 10 triangles. You know, it'd be like like 10 triangles. Like, and then he would like, just when he was a white belt, blue belt. And then after we got that, and he, like every comp would be like six wins, six triangles. It'd be like, honestly, the same move. But he would have different setups, but it would always finish with a triangle. Mm-hmm. That we have that locked in now. So it's like, right, now this... And then he started... When I moved to Nogi, he also did. He way prefer, He doesn't do gi anymore. Mm. So he just wants to do Nogi. Like like uh, like me and we're training every day. And now he started learning the leg locks and stuff. So it's like, now we're adding this in. It's just like... Jiu-Jitsu is a long game as well. Don't try and do everything too quickly. Yeah. You know, that's what I would say. Like, it takes time. In your school, do you do gi and Nogi? Or is it just... Yeah, I yeah, do gi and Nogi, yeah. yeah. Uh, mate, if I had my choice, I'd just do Nogi now. Just yeah. because, yeah, because I feel like... I feel like I give better classes, no gi, because I'm, I'm I'm more with the current games and stuff, you know, more with the current everything. I'm better at no gi now. I prefer teaching it I, because I, I always get involved because I teach so many classes. I train in all my classes I teach. That's how I get a lot of my training in. Otherwise, I'll just not train. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So every class I teach, I always train with my students. Yeah. So twice a week, I have to train in the gi. Because half my gym's like split, like half and really like the gi. So I have to do it. I can't. <laughs> I did flirt with the idea of giving it up and everyone's like, oh, the fuck? So I can't. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> but my gym's majority no gi. Yeah. It's only twice a week in the gi. Yeah. When we had Dan Strauss on, he talked about when he ran his no gi program at Mill Hill, he had like a no gi grading system and then it was separate to the gi grading system. What are your thoughts on like that? Or do you just grade I, I don't stuff? do that. I just grade people. Like if they just do no gi, I'll just grade them when I think they're that level or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I, it's very different. I understand why he would do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the other thing I wanted to ask is where you obviously mentioned about focus on sort of attacking movements or positions. Obviously, you know, sort of old, you know, and, and a lot of jujitsu is taught for beginners, like focus on defense, like yeah. heavily. Do you still do that as well? Or do you feel that like that's a bit old hat and maybe focus on a good offense is a good No, like, like, like I was saying earlier, I do every, every sparring we do, we're starting from bad positions and that will alternate as well. So everyone in the class has will be proficient in defending from mount, back, leg locks, everything. This is very important because there's great athletes I've seen who are lethal when they're attacking, like some of the best. And then as soon as they're in a bad spot, I've seen it. They just get tapped as soon as they're in a bad spot. It's like they they it's like they've put it's like they've got all their stats and they've just put it all into attack, <laughs> like zero stats into defense. You know, so they're they're killer if they're on the attack. But as soon as they get put in a bit of adversity, they get finished. So we never want that. You want to be well rounded. So we do like every every training, even if we're not, let's say, doing defenses that week or whatever, practicing defensive stuff. We're always starting in bad positions every yeah. round. Yeah. Everyone will do that because we're alternating. Do you know what I mean? So every every round we're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Matt. Yeah. Do you want to shout out any sponsors or anything, mate? Um, yeah, my sponsor Progress. Um, obviously Charles Alan Price for the strength and conditioning. Um Atomic Dojo as well. Do you know Atomic Dojo? Yeah. With Jeremy Skinner. He's uh he's an ADCC vet. He has like a good um online thing, it's really good. Like it's like an online classroom essentially, and you can send him videos and he uh, goes through techniques videos breakdowns everything's really good so he like sponsors me as well yeah yeah nice good yeah solid and if, if people want to book you for seminars post ADCC mate where do they find you just on my Instagram yeah, yeah Taylor nice. 96 yeah Perfect, and uh, man if I could I really I really want to get a sponsorship with Noco <laughs> what's that <laughs> Noco the drink the, the drinks man drink. I, my friend Richie yeah, yeah. sponsored by him man honestly I'd cut my arm off to get sponsored by him I'd go through them maybe. I'd want them bad man I want yeah, them on my ADCC like I want them on my ADCC kit, man. I just need them. I got through like three waves of emails and then they just stopped replying. I was like, fuck, <laughs> I want it so bad. All right, we'll clip this up then, mate, and yeah. we'll send it to <laughs> Yeah, we need, we need to get the guy who runs knock on this Yeah, just, bad. Don't, just don't cut your arm off before ADCC, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mate, well, thanks for coming on and Thank wish you all the best in the comments. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Brother.